So what we're going to be able to do now is we'll look at the construction of a matrix and we'll look at solving systems of equations. Um, we'll work our way to abstracting more what this geometry means um, now that we have the thing we're making. Um, and so we'll take the idea of a linear equation and finding a solution set and we'll introduce the idea of row operations. So let's take a system of equations seem to have lost my ability to write here. Give me a second. There we go. Yeah, better. All right, so the system of equations I'm going to have, so I'll have x1 plus x2 plus 2x3 equals 9. We'll have 2x1 plus 4x3 minus, whoops, x2, sorry, 4x2, minus 3x3 equals 1. And we're going to have 3 x1 plus 6x2 minus 5x3 x3 equals 0. Now before um, algebraically you would look at elimination you might combine two of these by um, eliminating variables and then the combined result you, you combine the other two eliminate variables and you would solve down. We're going to abstract those rules. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to make a matrix of all the coefficients and the solution. So we're going to make a special thing called an augmented matrix. Augmented matrix. And what I do is I take the coefficients of the variables and the solution as a row. It's good to think of that solution kind of having a dividing line here. And you'll see why as we progress that these coefficients in this thing um, are connected um, in many different ways. In fact, a lot of what we'll define here is these connections. So again, I take the coefficients of the second equation and the solution, and the coefficient of the third equation and the solution. And this will be an augmented matrix. And so now we have our thing. A matrix is an array of numbers. And what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate this to find a solution, if one exists. And I kind of want to think about what a solution is as we come back to this. So if I had my answer, my answer would be x1 is something. I'll make it a big A for right now. x2 is something. I'll just make it a big B. And x3 is something. I'll make it a big C. Well, this is three equations, and I could write the augmented matrix for this. I, if, and what we'll find is are the columns here represent the variables. Remember from the previous video, I said the columns represent the variables and my solution vector. And this is equation one, equation two, and equation three. So I could do equation one, I have one, in the x1 spot, 0 in the x2 spot, 0 in the x3 spot, and an A. For equation 2, it looks like this. And equation 3 
this. Right. I have 0 in x1, 0 in x2, but 1 in x3, and that equals c. I have 0 in x1, 1 in x2, 0 in x3, and that equals b. And there's this diagonalizing of 1s with zeros everywhere else. So if I could somehow turn this into this, that process should give me what my values are. And that, that's going to be our, our goal here. And, and so what we're going to do is we're going to use um, something that's called Gaussian elimination. We're, we're going to eliminate things um, to get this form. So our rules that we're going to be able to use will help define the steps we can take. So the rules that we will have, make sure I'm in the right. Um, let us do some certain things. So, when we were solving with equations, we could multiply the entire equation by a constant. We could change position of two equations. It doesn't matter which equation comes first in a system of equations. And we could add equations together or add a multiple. Well, these will turn into row operations. Since rows handle what an equation does, so our rules for row operations, or the row operations we can do, we can multiply a row by a constant, and technically a non-zero constant, right? Multiplying by zero gets us nowhere. Actually gets us less than nowhere, we lose information. Two, we can interchange, we can swap or interchange two rows. And three, we can add a multiple of one row to another. So let's use these three rules with this matrix here, this augmented matrix here. So let's see, one, one, two, nine is where we're going. And two, four, one, so one, 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 one. Let's see if I can get it here. Two, nine. Two, four, negative three, one. And three, six, negative five, zero. Three, six, negative five, zero. That's my augmented matrix. Again, my goal was I want ones down this, this diagonal here. Well, I already have a one here. So if I look at my goal, I want to try to find zeros beneath that. So I think I'm going to use these rules to get zeros here. Now, this diagonal element we'll call a pivot. as we continue on. And this is my first pivot. Generally, it's not a bad idea if you have a one to interchange rows so that it's up in your pivot point. But for right now, we have a one here. 
So I want to make this zero. And all I care about is what's happening in column one. So I want that to be a zero and I want that to be a zero. Everything else over here I don't care about. So if I want this to be a zero and this is already what I want it to be, I can take negative two times row one and I can add it to row two. And then I'm going to put the answer of that into row two. So negative two times one is negative two. And when I add that to two, it gets zero. So it's going to zero this out. Again, I'm only focusing right now on the things that will clear the zeros underneath here. That means if I take negative three times row one, and I add it to row three, and I put my answer into row three, that'll get me a zero in the first column. So now I'm gonna make my new matrix following the rules I, I just figured out. So I haven't changed row one, so this stays the same, one, one, two, nine. Now I'm gonna take negative two times row one, and I'm gonna add it to row two, and my answer is gonna go into row two. So negative two times one is negative two. And negative two plus two is zero. So I get a zero for my first element here. Now negative two times one is negative two. And negative two plus four is positive two. Negative two times two is negative four. And negative four and negative three is negative seven. Negative two times nine is negative 18. And negative 18 plus one is negative 17. So I have changed row two using that negative two times row one plus row two, and I put the result into row two. Now I'm going to change row three. Negative three times row one. So one times negative three is negative three. Negative three and three is zero. Negative three times one is negative three. Negative three and six is three. Negative three times two is negative six. Negative six and negative five is negative 11. Negative three times nine is negative 27. And negative 27 plus zero is negative 27. I now have a new matrix. And I have everything underneath the first pivot here. Right, the first pivot is one, everything below it is a zero. So now, remembering I want a diagonal of ones and zeros everywhere else, I want to focus on my second pivot here. It would be nice if this was a one. So the best thing to do is one half times row two. And I'm going to put the answer back into row two. So I'm going to come over here and rewrite it. So I haven't changed the first row. And one half times two is one. One half times negative seven is negative seven halves. And one half times negative 17 is negative 17 halves. And I still have this for the third row. So now I'm going to focus on this pivot and I need to get a zero below it. So negative three times row two plus row three, I can put the answer back into row three. And that will clear beneath the pivot for me. So if I do this operation here, nothing changes for row one, nothing changes for row two, and negative three times zero is zero, zero plus zero is zero, negative three times one is negative three, 
negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Now negative 3 times negative 7 halves is positive 21 halves. And positive 21 halves plus um, negative 11. Well, let's see, negative 11 is 22 halves, so that's negative 1 half. And then let's see, negative 3 times um, um, negative 17 halves is positive uh, 51 halves. And 51 halves plus negative 54 halves is minus 3 halves. And now, if I take negative 2 times row 3 and put the answer back into row 3, so I'll come down a bit here. 1, 1, 2, 9, 0, 1, negative 7 halves. These don't change. So multiply by negative 2, that's going to give me 1 and 3. Now, remembering that I wanted zeros here, I'm going to go up. And so, using row 3, 7 halves times row 3 plus row 2. I'm going to put back into row 2. That will clear this one. And negative 2 times row 3, put adding to row 1, I'll put back into row 1. So, 0, 0, 1, 3, 0, Let's see, 7 halves times 0 is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0, 7 halves times 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 7 halves times 1 is 7 halves, and 7 halves plus negative 7 halves is 0, and 7 halves times 3 is 21 halves, positive 21 halves, and, and negative is negative 4 halves or um, positive 2. Let's see. Let's see here. 7 halves, 21 halves is positive. Negative 17 halves, yeah, that's positive 2. So I did that first one. Now let's do my last one here. So negative 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1. Um, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 2 is 0. Negative 2 times 3 is 6, negative 6, plus 9, which is 3. And now I have one more pivot to clear. I need to clear this one. And so I can hit negative row 2 plus row 1 back into row 1. So I don't change row 3, I don't change row 2, and so 0 plus 1 is 1, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0, negative 2 plus 3 is 1. And notice now I can read off my answers. x1 equals 1, x2 equals 2, and x3 equals 3. And these will be my solutions. And so we're able to use the matrix form to solve this. What we've done is we've encoded the things we do when combining systems of equations into this gauss jordan elimination. And we're able to find answers to the matrix uh, that we have. What I want to do in the next couple of videos is do some examples 
that will expose some differences um, in this. Now, there are two ways to do gauss jordan elimination. When I got to this step here, I knew that x3 was equal to 3. And this second row here is saying 1x2 minus 7 halves x3 equals negative 17 halves. So we could do what's called back substitution. And I could come back in and substitute this and solve these equations. You're going to find I'm going to focus on this algorithm of clearing below the pivots and then clearing above the pivots for right now. But we'll, we'll, um, you'll see in the examples um, some different things that can take form.